Good morning, folks. We have to begin like this. If you missed yesterday's show, you missed what will be two of the top 10 science stories of the entire year. They happened on the same day. If you consider yourself an observer and you couldn't get to it yesterday, you need to find that time today. We have two more bombshells to hit here, but let's hit the sun, weather, and earthquakes first. We're at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star. We're calm. We've got large coronal hole signatures facing Earth. Active regions grace the limbs and far side. Solar wind is quiet, but a moderate enhancement is expected this weekend. Minor geomagnetic storm potential only. Top magnitude quakes of the day struck the southwest Pacific, but my eyes have come to the west coast of the states. Two days ago, I said on Facebook a four-shock sequence was beginning and we've got more of the above-average rumbles here. This is how it happened in the weeks leading up to the magnitude 7 in California a few years ago. Have some drought looks here, not just the official drought monitor, but complementary graphics showing how parts of the west might seem dry at the surface, but they're even drier down below, from four corners to Nevada. We're headed out to Mars next, and what we have identified as one of the potential Mars changes in the solar system shift is confirmed again. InSight has been detecting increasing numbers of quakes, and the scientists can't figure out why. And they've had two more larger ones strike the region, almost as big as the two record events. But we can say that the seismic activity on Mars has not gone away, and it was not a momentary anomaly. Now, folks, top story here is going to take a bit of explanation, so ears open too. They believe they have discovered evidence of a meteoritic impact over Antarctica nearly half a million years ago, but they say it was a unique kind of impact where a plasmic jet hit the region. Not an airburst, not a crater making impact, but it hit the atmosphere and vaporized. Didn't explode, just hit the ground as plasma and superheated gas in a jet like fashion. This is their evidence. I swear I can hear the gasps from veteran observers as they see the microtectites one of the signature signs of the solar micronova. So let's begin with their dating technique, the oxygen-18 isotope. You gotta be kidding me. Folks, one of the top five studies of the last decade is the one that showed how the Tibetan ice cap was thought to be more than half a million years old, but now has a potential maximum age of only 15,000 years. The culprit of the mistake, oxygen-18. So they say this is half a million years old using oxygen-18 and uh, yeah. Next, what do you mean the meteorite vaporized and continued on as a jet-like impact of plasma? That's not what meteors do. That's what plasma discharges do. And that comports with one of the favorite pieces of evidence of our plasma lab genius, Billy Yelverton. If you didn't know, there are coal beaches and a coal mountain down there in the middle of the ice, and I don't blame you if you didn't know. Most don't. But it's true, and you don't have to go digging. It's just right there on the surface. So much for pressure and eons of time to make coal. But a plasma strike burns and snuffs it out instantly. Charcoal. It's how you get these items on the surface. And the grand Easter egg of this story for veteran observers. If the coal and the microtectites from this, quote, meteor plasma event are indeed from the last catastrophe in solar micronova, the only thing left is to have put Antarctica near the equator as Major White, Chan Thomas, and Einstein believed, and as the pattern of magnetic excursion observational evidence suggests occurred, which all came out after those people died, by the way. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.